This video series is brought to you by Polygon. Make better renders faster. Time for something fun. We are gonna be, uh, I mean, working with a donut should be fun enough, but, uh, but this part is particularly fun. We're gonna be making uh, both the donut and the icing on it look more shapely. So we're gonna use sculpting to make this part look gloopy and like real icing and it's a lot of fun. Um, so before we do the sculpting, the sculpting will, uh, it'll work, but we only, the only detail we have is what is available to us in edit mode. Like if we're sculpting on a donut, this is all the detail we have. So really we wanna have a lot more detail than what we've got currently. So um, over here in your modifier section, we've got the subdivision modifier and there's a button we can apply it. And if we hit apply, it'll apply that detail to, the, to our donut. But before I do that, it's a good idea to have a copy of what it is before you're gonna apply it, just in case you need to go back. Um, and I say this from like years of using Blender, like, you know, you hit apply on something, you can't go back by the way, like a modifier, it's it's there and you can revisit it at any time. But once it's applied, it's like it's done. So um, that's why I think it's a good idea to, to keep a copy of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both my donut and my icing. I'm gonna hit shift D and that's created, oh, if you see it snapping like this, by the way, that's because your uh, snapping tool is still turned on. So anyways, I, I have duplicated it and you can see up here, we've now got uh, two donuts and two icings. And on, I'm gonna select, whoops, select my donut and my icing and I'm gonna hit M. So M is gonna move it to a collection. So collections are at the top here, we can see we've got a collection, just the default collection. So what I wanna do is I wanna move it to a new collection and then I'm gonna hide that collection. So, um, donut, my, my donut 001 and whatever, donut icing 001, I'm gonna move those to a new collection like this and I'm gonna call this archive. I just, I call it archive just to keep it out of the way. And then I'll just, I'll call this original just in case I wanna come back to them. And then I'm gonna, uh, on this new collection here, I'm just gonna uncheck that box next to it. So now I've still got my donut and icing, but if I want to, I can access another version of them. So that's just a way, you know, safety precaution for you. Okay, so with my donut here select, this is the one that we're gonna sculpt on first. Um, I'm gonna hit apply on my subdivision surface. And there we go. We've got all this detail here to work with. So now if I go to sculpting, so that along the top navigation bar there, Sculpting, zoom in a bit. <laughs> um, now we've got this. So we are in sculpt mode and uh, the, the hotkey you should remember, which has been turned off for some reason, there we go, um, is F. If you wanna change the size of your brush, it is F. Um, and there's also like, okay, where's the other settings for your brush? So uh, <laughs> if for some reason it's disabled, I, I'm pretty sure it's like a future version of Blender will have it enabled by default. But if you right click one of these buttons here and then along the header where it says header, just go show tool settings, then you'll actually get the settings that really should be there from the start. So I don't know why it's not there by default, but that's how you bring it in if you can't see it. Anyways, now that I've got this, yeah, I could change my radius there. Um, and I can also change my strength. Hey, thank you for the reminder, spider. It's always at the wrong time. Um, okay, now if I was to just draw on my mesh, you can see that we are uh, sculpting. We're pulling parts of the mesh out, but you'll notice we're also pulling another part of the mesh out. The reason for that is that by default, X symmetry mirror is turned on. So it's useful if you're sculpting a face, but we're sculpting a donut and that's very annoying. So I'm turning that off. And now when I sculpt, you can see we're pulling that out. Now, if I was to go into uh, edit mode, just to show you, it's pulled that out. That's exactly what it's doing right now. All it's doing is it's taking the mesh and it is deforming it in a way that's appropriate for sculpting. So, um, you might wonder well, what's the difference between sculpting and edit mode. I mean, not a lot, like you could do this next step like in you know edit mode and do proportional editing and all that kind of thing. But um, it's just different ways of working. Like some ways, especially when we do like, you know, the deforming of the, the gloopy bits of the icing, it's just easier to do with sculpting. Now, in the case of our donut, what we're going to do is uh, we wanna make it look like because basically the way donuts are made is they come out of a fryer. I actually filmed it, actually. I went to a donut shop and filmed it, but it comes out of a fryer. It, it, like it sits in 
a, a deep fryer and it sits there bubbling and then they flip it over and then the other side, but basically the part that is like floating like along the level part of the donut is, um, uh, it's uncooked. It's less cooked than the rest of it. So it's usually um, like the parts around it are sticking out a little bit more than the middle. So essentially, if I can find a good photo of it, this one right there, you can kind of see it there. This might actually be a bagel. I don't know what the American bagel company is. I mean, it might be a bagel, I don't know. But basically like the more cooked it is, I believe the more um, it'll like build the, the yeast or whatever, right? It'll kind of ex like expand it a little bit more. Anyways, point is, is the part around the middle, I wanna make it small. I wanna make it shrunken a little bit. So if I was to just draw, it's actually gonna pull it out. But if I hold down control as I draw, you can see that it's actually pushing it in. And that is what I want to do. So I'm just gonna go around it just like this. This isn't particularly fancy, but it does the job. Um, yeah. By the way, I'm doing this with a mouse and I do have a stylus, but I'm doing it with a mouse because I know most people watching just have a mouse. A stylus will be immediately better for sculpting because you have pen pressure and you can like taper off strokes just with ten pen pressure. Like it's so much better with a stylus. Um, so, you know, if you get serious about sculpting or Blender at some point, it's probably a good investment, but I'm doing it with a mouse so you can too. Okay, so that's okay. Um, but having a look at this, we need a little bit more detail. It's a little bit low res. So I'm going back to layout mode. I'm just gonna add another subsurf modifier. So I'll just add one here. Make sure, when you apply it, by the way, it'll apply whatever is in viewport subdivision, right? So um, it's just gonna apply that. So I'm just gonna hit apply and there we go. Got a little bit more to play with now. Back to sculpt mode and away we go. I did that step deliberately, by the way, cause I know, uh, you know, I, I want to show you like the thought process of uh, how you solve these sorts of problems. So um, yeah, as you can see, pretty uh, pretty simple. Don't want to go too far, you know. By the way, the, the keyboard shortcuts like Shift F will actually be the strength. So if you don't want to have to keep going up there, you can just hit Shift F and you can control it there. And then F is the size of the brush. So I use F a lot, Shift F not so much because it's a little weird to me, but um, yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. We could also change to like a smooth brush. Like if you go too far, you could kind of smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, let's try using Shift F, there we go. Um, yeah, you can kind of control it like that. Uh, but okay, so that is the donut. I might actually, just while I'm here, actually, let me have a look. I didn't even do this for my, um, my donut, but what does the inside of a donut look like? Nothing. Uh, it looks exact, it looks completely, perfectly round. Um, well, you know, nothing's perfect. So I'm gonna just like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna hold down control and I'm just gonna like add a little bit of detail here. Like some detail is better than no detail, right? Even if it's just like a tiny little bit, it's better than it just looking completely perfect because nothing is completely perfect in the real world. Okay, so the donut part is good. Now we're gonna do uh, similar steps, but for the icing. So I'm going to apply my solidify modifier first. And then the next one is the subsurf modifier. Let me just unhide the rest of the mesh just in case that causes problems later on, because it can in your sculpt mode, you won't be able to see it. Um, and the other thing, I'm just gonna increase my subsurf modifier just to give myself a little bit more detail in the sculpting stage. So I'm applying that to level three, apply, and now this is the detail level that we have to work with. So I'm going to sculpt mode now. And along my brushes here, the one I'm gonna use is called Inflate. And this I'm gonna use, ellipse, um, yeah, the clip start. I believe we did this. Yeah, we did this in the previous tutorial, but changing the clip start, I believe, I guess there's a different clip start for different modes. Um, but anyways, so I'm changing that so I can get in close. Inflate will allow me to sculpt and what it's gonna do is it's gonna pull, yeah, it's gonna almost like it's like sticking inside the mesh and it's like inflating it slightly. And it's gonna create a, uh, like a dripping effect, which is very, very common for, um, for droplets. Like you can see just along that edge there, that's really hard to, uh, hard to get there. But basically wherever, there's a better photo maybe, wherever the, the liquid builds up, like as gravity pulls it down, it, it's obviously gonna be more built up there. So. 
essentially I'm just doing a couple of clips, clicks, obviously clicks, not clips, to, uh, to make it look a little bit gloopy. So one, two, three, maybe, something like that. This is where you don't copy me exactly. You, uh, you see what I'm doing and then you apply it to yours because um, just a couple of clips because your, your version is obviously gonna be different to mine. You're gonna have little droplets in different places. Um, so it's just a matter of picking the droplets and just sculpting a little bit of detail. Just make sure that the tip of it, you know, make it look like the weight of it, like it really is like the ball of the, the, the dripping icing is like at the head of it, at the very bottom of it, right? The inflate brush is really good for this. Um, it's really handy. I'll do a little bit for this part here as well. It's pretty good. A little bit here maybe. Maybe, I don't know, it's a little, looks a little bit weird. <laughs> um, and you just go along it. It's kind of relaxing. It's quite a fun step, I like this part. You just kind of imitate how liquid forms. Yeah, man, hardcore. Cool, cool stuff. Um, cool, so that's about that. Now we can switch, of course, to the smooth step. If you go too far, you can like smooth something out if it looks a little bit odd, um, but that's okay. By the way, we will, the parts that are sticking out, don't worry about that, we'll go back to the edit and we'll, uh, we'll move those in, but for now it's okay. Oh, that part needs to be smoothed a bit. It looks a little bit odd, but that's cool. I also, I, I, I guess we forgot to do it for like the edit stage. We forgot to like kind of like do this inner part ring here as well. So actually what I was just preparing for this tutorial, I was like, let's see if I can actually fix it just in sculpt and just add a few like little dropply bits. And uh, yeah, you kind of can, cause like the inner part of a donut, it's not gonna have like lots of liquid that's like gonna be dribbling down or whatever, but it's gonna have a little bit, like it's not gonna be a perfectly clean edge. So I'm just using the grab brush and I'm just like pulling randomly around here, like so, like it's kind of like been pinched in a little bit. And then I'll also use like the inflate brush and I'll inflate like little bits of it maybe, just like a little bit, just like running along the edge. And as I said, something is better than nothing. All right, that's pretty good. And then the only other thing we are gonna do is use draw mode with a small strength, 0.2 or something like that. And I'm just gonna create a little bit of random displacement across my icing here. Because we got the sculpt brush out, why not, right? gone to the trouble of preparing the mesh so that we can sculpt on it, might as well add in a little bit of detail because the real world, like, I mean, as if icing could ever be perfectly just the right amount of milli, like point, uh, what was it, two, 25 millimeters that we used for the, uh, for the solidify modifier. Like it's never gonna be as perfect as that in the real world. So um, there's gonna be parts that are gonna have more icing, thicker icing, less than others, etc. So. It's just adding in that detail. You can also hold down control, of course, to go the other direction. And then if you go too far, you can smooth it out a little bit as well. This is, uh, you know, it's getting a painting sort of look to it. But that's kind of cool. It looks a little bit like icing. Okay, so going back to layout mode, um, you'll see, you know, as I mentioned, you've got parts that are like sticking out Obviously that's not gonna be like that for a, I mean, maybe if it was like frozen in time as the droplet fell, but it's, uh, we want it to stick to the donut. So in edit mode, we have a lot more vertices to play with. And this is by the way, where it comes to like, as I mentioned, like you wanna have as few vertices as possible whilst you're editing. This is what I mean. Like this is really hard to control this mesh right now because there's so much going on with it. But as it turns out, we really just need to just like move that part in a little bit. So provided we have proportional editing turned on and we've got it set to smooth, if I grab that little piece there, turn up my proportional editing and I pull that in. And also I'm gonna use rotate, so R to rotate. Why is that turned off? It just randomly turns off the screencast tool so you can't see what I'm pressing. Pressing. Um, which is annoying. So my apologies if sometimes I'm using stuff on here and the, the tool is turned off. It's just, uh, 
It's a little buggy. <laughs> it's a great add-on, you know, props to whoever made it. It's very handy, but a little buggy. Um, so I'll just pull that in a little bit. There we go. Like that. So you just want to make it look like it's obviously hugging the donut. Like it's really part of the donut. And uh, yeah, just do that for the rest of it. We have gone over though, so we will do that. I will do that off camera. Just continue this for all of the droplets along the thing. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and join me in the next part as we uh, continue making the donut. I believe we're doing materials next. So click here and I will see you in the next video.